do remember to, to share and tell other people and comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's really important to spread the good news of the kingdom. You know, the, the YouTube is an evangelical tool, so let's use it. Good morning, happy Easter, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. Alleluia. And now our choir are going to sing a wonderful intro before we start our service. Thank you. This joyful Easter time, our crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. And on this day, we light the Paschal candle is so high <laughs> and of course in other times we'd all have a candle in our hands and as the pastel candle is lit so the church is lit up by the, 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 uh, the power of Christ's light. But as we have got our Paschal candle, we have some special prayers which reflect on the sign on the front. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power, through every age and forever. Amen. So friends, it is wonderful to welcome you all this morning, as, you've, as we have uh, had already some wonderful singing by our friends William and Ed and Jonathan and Kirsty, I have remembered all their names. So thank you uh, for your first piece of music and we are going to be uh, 
joyfully listening to them later on as well. And on this special morning, we remember, as we all, always do, that we are here because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we pray together, and we will start, friends, with the prayer of preparation, which is on page three of your service sheet. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we remember particularly this Easter day, we remember the price that our Lord Jesus Christ paid for our sins. We know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. And so as we gather together on this Easter Sunday, let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love with all people as we join together in our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in goodness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is Easter Day, friends, so we stand and we say together the words of our Gloria. Perhaps in the future we can sing it, but today we will say it. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We, we praise, praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the, in the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. And our special prayer, our special collect prayer for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame all the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to, you, to whom be with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And please do sit as we hear our first reading from the Book of Acts. I'm reading this morning from Acts 10, 34, 2 to verse 43. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. 
You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not only to all the people, but to those who were chosen by God as witnesses and who drank, who, sorry, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jackie. And before our gospel hymn, uh, our, our gospel reading rather, our choir will sing a setting of Psalm 118 by Thomas Morley. And if, for those of you who need to brush up on your Latin, what they're saying is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice in it. Thank you. According to Mark. A reading from the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they may go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone from us, for us, to the, from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be afraid, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, 
There is the place where he, they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. May I speak this day in the name of the living and risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do sit down. So it's glorious to see more people here today, and the sun has come out, and if you're very, if you're very careful, you might be able to snaffle one of the Easter chocolate bunnies on your way out. That was my bribe to get people here. So, today is, with Christmas, the most important festival of the year for Christians of all traditions. But I'm not sure about you, but today is a bit of a shock to me. I have been managing services online for completely for a while with the help of wonderful Matthew here. And I'm never really quite sure what the reaction of people's faces are going to be. So today, thank you for whatever reactions you'll be giving to me. To me, And remember, just do let me know afterwards. But it's also a shock, since it is unbelievable that it is a little over a year since we first heard the word lockdown. And we started the various measures, which more recently were the wonderful vaccine which many of us have taken or been offered, has brought us towards a safer environment. We are not yet, as they say, out of the woods. But there's still, and there's still a danger of infection, so please carry on being very careful. But the beginning of the end seems to be in sight. Did any of us imagine this last year? The amazing passage from Mark's Gospel that we heard highlights the shock of Mary and the other women when they saw the empty tomb and the angel who told them that Jesus was not there. As we heard, they were so shocked and amazed and terrified that they did not tell anyone immediately. In fact, if you check your Bibles, the verses after what we heard, verses 9 through 19, are often not included because it's generally regarded by the theologians that those last verses were not written by Mark in the first place and technically shouldn't be there. And that for me highlights the impact. The end of Mark's gospel is designed to shock us. Shock us that the amazing truth which is further described elsewhere in that passage from the book of Acts will be heard, where Jesus is no longer dead, he's physically alive. We hear how he ate fish with other people to prove that he was certainly no ghost. Are we this morning shocked, like those women? What will we tell others about the meaning of Easter? The women were told to go and tell Peter and the other disciples of what they had seen and heard. And it was very important to, to highlight that it was to women that the resurrection of Jesus was announced, not to the men disciples. Now let me take you back. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he was born in unusual circumstances and in poverty. The Magi, when they came along a, few, a year or so later, the three kings, came to meet the King Jesus in a stable behind an inn. And do you remember who the first people were to have been told about that amazing event? They were the lowly shepherds working a night shift, looking after the sheep outside Jerusalem. They were the outsiders in Jewish society of the time. And so some 30 years later, it was to other people who, Jesus, who Jewish society at the time regarded as outsiders, namely women, that the resurrection was announced. Now, that sounds very odd, 
and wrong today, which absolutely it is, but we need to understand the historical context of when the Bible was written. And here today, there are many people in today's society that are often seen as outsiders. The poor, those who are struggling with their finances, the unemployed, the disabled in mentally and physically, and in, in addition to people who are regarded as foreigners from other countries, including refugees. And this country, as we've been hearing in the news these last couple of days, is still battling against the evil of racism in many forms. And it is racism, racism that regards other people as outsiders and not with the same perceived rights. And that is just plain wrong. We are all children of God. However, whatever description of outsiders is used, the gospel narrative is explicitly showing that God is there for all people equally. Treating people equally should not need equal pay and equal treatment and anti-racism legislation. It is our God-given obligation. God is blind to differences of any side. So in this past year, we have seen some wonderful work happening in this community. Ever since last March, gosh, it seems a long time ago now, when I had the opportunity to start a small food bank here with the Food Cycle Charity, I have seen many, many, many people come forward to offer help and assistance. Others who might have been regarded as outsiders due to their financial or other circumstances. Food has been delivered to the sick, the housebound, the lonely, the isolated, those who've lost their jobs due to the pandemic and who might have just managed before they were put on furlough, but no, 80% of a low wage is certainly not enough. These are all people whom parts of society might have regarded as being outsiders but they're not outsiders to God. As you are probably aware, in late summer last year, the food bank operation was continuing to grow so much that it was relocated to the Sidings Community Centre down the road and renamed the West Hampstead Community Food Hub. And from there, we are currently delivering or having collected 145 uh, bags of food each Saturday and a further 50 to 60 people come here for a pre-cooked wholesome meal which is cooked by Food Cycle. And I want to take this opportunity on Easter Sunday to say a very big thank you to all those people who have helped in whatever way and uh, who run the food bank and Food Cycle. We are, as you will see if you come along, an eclectic group of people bracket most much younger than me, uh, from a wide cross-section of the local community of all faiths and none, when we come together to help. And I remain involved because I truly believe that it is God's work to help people in society, who others might regard as outsiders. As a result of, the, of all that work, more people have got to know what St. Cuthbert's does and more people from that community are coming to join us, which is wonderful. Easter Sunday is the day for shocking and wonderful joy, since Jesus is risen from the dead. And at this time, I also wanted to particularly remember, as I said in, in the posters, all those who have died during this pandemic which now stands, as we know, at over 126,000. Could we have even imagined that in our worst dreams last year? That number is almost too large to comprehend, but each was a personal tragedy to their family and friends. And here in our own community, we've lost three important people. We've lost David G to COVID, who was a wonderful pianist here on a Sunday morning. We've lost our own Alan Hitchin, um, the church warden for many, many years who passed away, and a lovely Sandy Peopanaikum, who I remember just 
shuffling up in, in, in his motorised wheelchair every Sunday, bless him, always late, but that was Sunday. And as we remember and mourn all those who have died this past year, we can also celebrate their lives in the sure and certain knowledge that they live in, lie in peace and rest with their Saviour. And finally, what is the Easter message for me? It is coming to terms with the awesome reality that God in Christ suffered and died for my sins and then was actually and physically resurrected. And when Jesus did rise from the tomb, God made an explicit point, as he did at the birth of Jesus, to confirm that there are no outsiders to God, since we are all born equal and loved equally. So friends, I hope you do feel a bit shocked this morning with this awesome reality. And as we leave here today, what message should we share with other people? I believe it should be that God loves each and every one of us so much that he gave his only son to suffer on, on the cross and to die for us and then was physically resurrected from the dead to show that God is always with us. And God is with all people, even and even especially those who may be treated unfairly or who feel they are outsiders in any way. We are one in Christ because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Shall we stand, if we could, and say together, we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you'll see on page 7 of your service book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because he is not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please do sit or kneel as we have our short time of prayer this morning. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Saviour may fill us and all his people, all people who he loves equally, with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for churches around the world, Lord, those who are isolated and perse persecuted, for the church leaders around the world, and particularly remembering in our prayers this day, Archbishop Justin, Bishop Sarah of London, and Bishop Rob, our local area bishop, that we and they may find fresh strength 
in the good news of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we pray this Lord, day, Lord, that you may provide for those who lack food or shelter, work or finance. You know their needs, Lord, and you know how suddenly many people have been brought into a most difficult situation. And at this time we give thanks for the support which this wonderful community has given out to so many people who are struggling at this present time. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. As we enjoy the sunshine in this country, we remember those in other parts of the world where the crops have failed, where there is famine, where there is destitution, where they don't have a national health service and free access to health care. So we pray for all those struggling in other countries around the world who are not in the privileged position that we are in this country, for whom getting a vaccine is still a long distant dream. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are suffering in our community through body, mind or spirit. Remember those who might be at home or in hospital at this time, remembering our friend Eleanor in her home. And perhaps in a moment of stillness, let us remember before God those of our friends and family who are suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray that according to your promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. And so we remember before God the souls of Alan Hitchin, Sandy Piperneracam, and David G. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you like to stand for a moment? We've got this wonderful tradition here that we share the peace. And we can't do it by shaking hands at the moment, so we've learnt, taught each other sign language. And the sign language for peace, when I checked it out, was peace. So those of you who haven't done it, we can teach you now. Right. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to you. Uh, and we even got the camera coming around to check out what you're doing on three times. Now, you, you're not conducting. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> Need an orchestra. <laughs> right. Excellent. So, friends, let us sit and reflect as we come to the moment where we recall the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we go into this communion, let me just explain that in line with the protocols, it'll be safe if I will come to give you communion and we'll be distributing um, in one kind, namely the bread this morning. So you stay where you are and I will come to you masked up.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful deeds. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and the power of all creation forever say together this hymn of glory, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these thy gifts of bread and of wine may be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen and Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, call into mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and of thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon all your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are, are one, one body, because, because we all share in one, one bread. he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And we join together in the prayer on page four, we do not presume. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. For those of you who wish to receive communion this morning on this special day, um, I will come to you.
come to you with a mosque. sing with the Spirit, although we look forward to doing exactly that when it is safe. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and so friends, having been fed and refreshed by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ on this most special day, the day where we remember that Christ conquered death and is our everlasting Saviour. So we must come and give special thanks this day. Our special prayer after communion on Easter day, God of life who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant us 
so to die to sin daily, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And can I invite us all to join together in the first of the two prayers after communion, which you'll find on page 15 at the back of your service book. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send, Send us, us out, out in the power, power of your spirit, spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. So, friends, it is wonderful to see you all here. It's, it's nice when I can see the back as well. So, thank you for all who have come. Uh, and, of course, as I always say, bring your friends next time. And lovely. And thank you so much to our wonderful choir here. William, some of you may have seen on television last night. He was singing at the uh, at, um, English National Opera, The Messiah. So thank you, William. Um, uh, and, and his friends, thank you so much. It's really made this Easter special, particularly as we're now getting out of lockdown, we hope and pray. So thank you once again. <laughs> But they're going to sing something lovely at the end as well. <laughs> so we look forward to that. Um, and for those who would normally log in for a coffee morning after service, um, I won't be having a coffee morning after service today because I think most of us are here. Um, but, and if you are new here, remember that I broadcast night prayer every Friday, Saturday and Sunday evening. And all our services on Sunday are available live on Facebook. We have Facebook people watching us here. And you can never tell how many people are watching. Sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 50. Uh, and I look later on the week and other people are logged in. And of course, we've got our YouTube channel as well. So we are getting there when it comes to social media. So on this special day, let us remember God's presence with us and ask for his blessing uh, upon us this day. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Easter day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.